Hi everyone, this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to get the Arduino IDE working on Mac OS X. So the first thing we have to do is download the Arduino IDE, which is a program that lets us write code and upload code to the Arduino. So I'm going to open up a Safari window and go to arduino.cc. That's uh, the home page. We're going to go under software. Scroll down a little bit to download the Arduino IDE. And we want Mac OS X. There's only one option, it's pretty easy. And then we hit just download. So I already have a version here that I downloaded before filming this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click that. Normally you would just have to wait till the download is all done. You can open up the Arduino. And it's going to go through its normal installing things. It's okay, and so this is the splash screen that you're going to get every time that you open the Arduino IDE. And when you're done, this is what the Arduino IDE looks like. So there are some recommended settings that you should know about, uh, so I'll show you where to find those. First make sure that you have your Arduino window clicked, so that way in the top left we can press Arduino and go into Preferences. One pretty important option is down here that says Display Line Numbers. This is going to help you when you debug your code and the Arduino spits out a bunch of errors and you don't know exactly where those are, this will actually give you a line number for those. And then also, for me personally, uh, the font's just a little bit too small normally, so I'm just going to make it instead of 12, 16. Yep, a little bigger, a little easier to see. So let's go through a little bit of what's in this box right here. On the top left, we have a check button. Uh, when you scroll over it, it says verify. This will run and compile your code, testing it to make sure that there are no errors. So, you know, if I just put a bunch of garbage in here that's not real code, and I press verify, yeah, I get an error compiling. So you would do this as you're working on code, or if you just want to double check that the thing that you just copy and pasted or added from some other place works. And then when you're ready to take that code that you've written or is right in front of you and put it on your board, uh, you would press upload, which is gonna compile it just like the verify does. Uh, but then it is actually going to send it to the Arduino or whatever microcontroller you have plugged in. Uh, going down to the right, uh, new, just opens up a new sketch. Uh, open, pretty self-explanatory and save. And then coming over to the right here, we have a little magnifying glass uh, with something called Serial Monitor. Uh, I'll show you that in an example in a second, but what the Serial Monitor does is it lets us tell the Arduino, hey, uh, maybe you have a sensor connected, and you say, hey, I want you to send me back whatever the sensor sees, you know, every second. And that's where it would come up, is in the Serial Monitor, but we'll see that later. So we can go to File, Examples, Basics, and then Blink. This sketch uploads a program to your Arduino, which just has an LED turn on and off every second. With our code ready to go, we can plug in our Arduino. Once you plug it on, you should see some lights come on. And then we are going to go to Tools, up at that top bar. Under Board, we want Arduino Genuino Uno, because that's the board that we are going to upload code to. And then once that's selected, go back into Tools, Port, and you should see one of them that says Arduino, Arduino Uno, something like that. So we'll click that. With those two things set, the computer now knows what board you're compiling code for, and then also where it should send it because of that port. We can press Upload. If you haven't saved your sketch already, it might ask you, or it might not. And you'll see towards the bottom, the program is compiling. That means it's taking everything that we've written. 
and translating it into something that the Arduino itself can run. And then once it's all compiled with no errors, it will upload that to the board. And then once you see done compiling, let's take a look at the Arduino board. And you should see one of the lights turning on and off about every second. So let's do another example to show you what the serial monitor looks like. We'll go back to File, Examples, Basics, but instead of Blink, we want Digital Read Serial. So press that. A new sketch will open up. Now this one wants us to attach a button to one of the pins, but I just want to show you what the serial monitor looks like. So we can upload this code. The tool settings that we put in with the board and the port uh, should still be the same. We can check those, but I'm pretty sure they're the same. So we can just hit upload. And it's going to go through the same thing, compiling and then actually uploading. And then once that's done uploading, to see the information that the Arduino is sending back, we go to the top right to the little magnifying glass called Serial Monitor. You could also go under Tools and then Serial Monitor. It'll bring up the same window. Uh, and you can see that we are getting some data back. Uh, down here is something called the baud rate. So this is the rate at which the Arduino sends information back. Uh, if we go back over to the sketch, it says serial.begin 9600. And if we go to our serial monitor, it's set at 9600. So these things have to match if you want your data back in some readable way. Uh, some devices send things faster, some things might actually send things slower, but you just have to get them to match. And while this sketch in particular doesn't support it, uh, you could actually type commands in here and send them to your Arduino. And if you maybe wanted a light that lights up or turns off based on specifically what you send it, if you send it on, it'll turn on and off if you turn off, this is where you'd be sending those commands. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to install a library. Uh, a library is a repository of code and functions and examples someone has made. And if we want to implement, let's say, a LCD screen or maybe a motor controller, and someone else has written a library for it and we would like to use that, this is how you would do that. So I'm going to go back to my Arduino IDE and just make sure one of the windows is pressed so I can navigate to the top under sketch, going down under include library, and then the first one, manage libraries, and that's going to bring up a pop-up. The first thing that pop-up it's going to do is it's going to look at the libraries we already have installed. There are some that just come with Arduino, and it's going to try and update those, but after it's done, you can interact with this window. Let's say I found a library that is for controlling screens, and I know what the name is. It's U8 G-L-I-B. Okay. So yeah, I found it. It's down here at the bottom, and if I want to install it, there's a button here that just says install, so I can click that. It's going to take a second to download and then install. But once that's done, we can go back to the sketch at the very top, include library, and if we scroll down, we'll see that it was added in our library list and also added if we go to file and examples and scroll down that a lot of libraries come with examples not all of them but most of them yep this library did indeed come with some examples that we can look at and test for whatever new piece of hardware we're trying to implement hopefully you found this tutorial helpful and now that you can upload code to your arduino and change examples and kind of tinker that you'll be part of the maker community and if you want to become a part of the Thimble community, head over to learning.thimble.io, join our forums. If you have questions, feel free to post. Take a look at the learning modules. There's a lot of code and documentation on those if you kind of want to look at some more complex things that you won't see in some of the examples. And have fun making!